Hi everyone. God's really been speaking to us as Christ Central Churches about our togetherness. In fact, that's our New Frontiers history. God spoke to us many decades ago saying we can do more together than we ever can on our own. In fact, when Anne and I first went to Africa, we saw a sign at the airport and it said this, if you want to go faster, go alone. But if you want to go further, go together. And God's speaking to us about partnership. He's talking to us about our togetherness. He's talking to us about doing mission together. In fact, that's always been God's heart. It comes out of who God is. He is the God who is in community. He's the God who is in partnership, in beautiful Trinitarian relationship together. And right through the Bible, there's an amazing word in the New Testament that talks about our togetherness. It talks about our partnership together. And it's the Greek word koinonia. And this is what it means. It means a joint partnership. It means sharing together. It means building together. It means team working together, an alliance together, a strong implication of us acting together, doing something together, a joint venture together. And I feel God is saying and underlining that he wants us to be, as Christ Central Churches, a church movement that partners together. Now, there are six different expressions of that word koinonia in the New Testament. Uh, the first one, actually, is about marriage. It says in 1 Peter 3, verse 7, you and your wife are partners, your koinonia, together in receiving God's blessing. It's not good that man should be alone. We're supposed to be together in ministry. To, if you're married, together in marriage. And I think God wants to speak a lot more to us about marriage on a mission and working together, men and women working together. The next one is a sense of business partnership. It's interesting in Luke chapter 5, verse 10, it says, James and John, the fishermen, were business partners together. There's that koinonia, that partnering, that working together. And I think actually, again, God wants to underline that. There are many businessmen and biz business women that I'm addressing right now, and God's saying to you, well done. You've got a great sphere of activity, and God wants you to use your gift to partner together, to be great business people, to raise finance for the kingdom of God. We need to see more people like you raised up across our churches. Well done if you're doing that. The third one is, I think, probably one of the most amazing ones. It's our partnership together with God, or more specifically, our partnership together with Jesus. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful, and you were called into partnership with him, koinonia with him and his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's this sense of us being together in Christ. In fact, that's probably the Bible's or the New Testament's favourite expression of us as believers, that we're those who are joined to Christ, in union with Christ, literally incorporated into him. And God wants you to know that today as you listen to this. Wherever you may be listening to this across the world, you're not separate, you're not isolated, you're not independent. You're in Christ Jesus. And therefore, everything that's true of him is true of you. Do you feel loved today? Well, you need to know that you're in the beloved. You're in the loved one. And when the Father looks at you, he sees you clothed with Christ. You're in Jesus today, receiving the same love that Jesus receives from the Father. Do you feel secure today? Well, do you know what? You're in the one who reigns forever, the Prince of Peace, who's the King over all. You're in him and you're secure. In fact, as I mentioned, the Prince of Peace. Do you feel peaceful? Are you upset by things happening on the world stage? Well, actually... You're in the Prince of Peace. And whether you feel it or not, you have peace today in Christ. Are you righteous today? Are you worried about things you said or done? Do you know what? You're in the Righteous One. 
forever declared righteous because of what Jesus has done. This partnership of being in Christ for me is just the most amazing truth of the New Testament. Number four, it talks about us being partners together in the church. In Acts 2, 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, partnership, koinonia, the breaking of bread and prayer. And I want to really underline that for you prophetically, that you're in a community, the community of the church, that is not just a club, it's not just an organisation, it's a partnership, fellowship, organic body where you're joined together and actually that joining, that togetherness, that relationship that you have is a beautiful display of love and light to our dark world. In fact, Jesus calls us, the church, a city on a hill whose light shines in darkness. And it's because of those beautiful relationships that we have together in Christ, but not isolated, together in unity. We are partners together in the church. I pray for you, wherever you are, that your light as a community would shine out clearly for him, even in these increasingly dark days. Number five, there's an apostolic partnership. I really want to zone in and zoom in on that today as we're talking about koinonia, we're talking about partnership, we're talking about this linking and working together. Paul says in Philippians 1 verses 4 to 5, in all of my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. He's saying we're partners together. We're not just apostles out there on the road planting churches, going to new nations. We are partners together. I want to say that to you. We're partners together with you. Wherever you are, you might feel separated. You might feel you're in a nation where you're not able to travel or not able to go, but we're partners together in this. He also says in Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing that we share together for the sake of Christ. We're partners together. And God's spoken to us as Christ Central team that we're never to be alone. We're never to go on our own. We're always to be linking arms together. One of the things I love to do if we were on a stage with other ministries, apostles and prophets, I love sometimes just to link arms with them and say we're together in this. And I was reminded of a famous saying in the Bible. It says, one can turn a thousand, but two You'd think it would say you could turn 2,000. It doesn't. It's the power of 10. One can turn 1,000, but two can turn 10,000. I'm speaking to you from England. And uh, in English history, before the motor car and tractors and the combustion engine, we used to rely so much on horsepower. In fact, you still have cars ironically defined by how many horsepower they have. And one of our famous horses was the Shire horse. It was the strongest, most muscular horse. It was really the bedrock of the um, farming community. And uh, it was fascinating that if you had a cart horse on its own, it could pull the equivalent of a tongue. But if you teamed a cart horse together with another horse in unity, in team, in partnership, in koinonia, it could not just pull two tons. Amazingly, it was the power of 10. It could pull 10 tons. And God is speaking to us about working together. He's speaking to us about being an apostolic movement of churches and teams and ministries that link arms and work together. It's so true of those early apostles. If you go through the book of Acts, it's amazing to see they never, ever go on their own. They are praying together. They're writing letters together, if you read it carefully. They're on mission together, they're worshipping together, they're in fellowship together, they even go to prison together. They are a together people and that's what God is calling us to do 
as Christ Central Churches as we serve something like 300 churches around the world in 25 different nations. God's calling us all the more to partner together, to go to new territory, to go to new towns, new villages, new cities, even new nations, but to do that together. And that's our call to you. Let's work together. How can we respond together? You see, koinonia is such a together word. It's a a verb. It's an ing word. It's doing something together. It's being something together. It's not static. It's on the move. But I think there's several things we can do together to be Christ central churches working together in the nation and the nations. The first one is praying together. It's really important, as you've heard those amazing reports from around the world, pray for situations. God hears our prayers. He answers our prayers. As we pray for brothers and sisters in war-torn nations, as we pray for those who are experiencing great economic tragedy and crisis, as we pray for those who are sick, as we pray for those who don't yet know the gospel, God answers prayer. Part of our partnership is to be linking arms and praying together. Another one is receiving ministries. It's wonderful to see apostles working with prophets, working with evangelists and pastors and teachers, working together to serve the churches. I want to encourage you in your local setting, invite in those that you know that are carrying that anointing from God. There's something about partnering when we receive others together and we get caught up together we get our heads lifted up we we so often are looking down and looking in but when we receive ministers in apostles and prophets our eyes are lifted up our heads are lifted up we see God's big picture and we suddenly start partnering together another one is sending I'm so thrilled that so many of our churches are now sending leaders teams workers to other churches to strengthen to encourage, I want to say thank you for those who are sending men and women to other settings to strengthen and partner together. But as I bring this to a conclusion, for me, the number six of our koinonias, our partnering, is this sense of giving together. It's really important that we understand we have a role and a responsibility for our brothers and sisters to support them. Our giving is going to go to supporting apostolic teams in the nations. You've already heard from some of them. It's going to help equip churches in this current crisis to serve the poor and the needy and the marginalised through the great work that organisations like Jubilee Plus are doing. It's also going to help churches to be strong locally and to consider where they're going to be planting next and We've got some great plans to plant in new nations and new territories. We need your help. We need your partnership. We need you to step out. And you might think, well, in this current climate, I've got very little. Well, in the hands of Jesus, even five loaves and two fishes, even a boy's lunch can feed a multitude. It's not about what we bring. It's who we bring it to. And as we bring it to Jesus... He multiplies our offering. He multiplies our giving. And there's this sense of beautiful partnership in it. So today, as we come to bring our great offerings, whether that's collectively as a local church, whether that's you individually, I want to say thank you for that. I want to say thank you for trusting us with your finance. Thank you for partnering with us in this. And I just want to end by reminding you of the Macedonians. They were some of the poorest people in the country and they appealed to Paul when he was taking an offering up for the poor and the needy. They say, we want to be part of this. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4, even the Macedonians pleaded urgently with us for the privilege of partnering in service for God's people together. I really believe that God is calling us together to partner with him. Whatever your circumstances, whether you feel it's a loaf or a fish, God's calling us to work together. As we said right at the start, I really believe we can do more together than we ever can on our own. Thank you. 
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for us being caught up in these beautiful relationships, whether it's with you joined in Christ, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a church family, or whether it's being caught up on apostolic mission together. We thank you, Lord, that we are partners together. We're koinonia together. We're caught up together. And Lord, I want to ask you, as we bring our finances, however small, it might feel like a loaf or a fish, but we're bringing this to your hands to multiply it, because ultimately, Lord, we're in partnership with you, and you're the one who does miracles, signs, and wonders amongst us. So we ask you, Lord, as we give in faith, Will you bless this offering and may it be multiplied around the world. May churches be strengthened, may teams be supported and may the nations be reached. In Jesus' name, amen.